Actually, let me give you another puzzle right now. So let's consider our beautiful symmetrical U-shaped graph based at the origin and having this lovely symmetry on either side of the origin. Now, let me tell you something. I like this graph so much. I'd like to have one of these U-shaped graphs balancing on my head, please. Okay, it's kind of a crazy question. What do I mean by that? So let me tell you. Um, I'm in America and heights are measured in feet and I'll tell you I'm exactly six feet tall. And suppose I'm standing on some axes and let me say I'm standing at position four. So I'm at position four, I'm six feet tall, so let me just draw me. So here's me, um, I'm a very blobby person apparently. Do, 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 do. Hello, that's me. Oh my gosh. And I'm six feet tall, so it means the top of my head is at position six. So I'm standing at position four on the horizontal axis and the top of my head is at height six on the vertical axis. What I'd like now is one of these graphs balancing on my head, please. So, instead of being centered right at the origin, I want it now centered at the point four comma six. Can you find a formula y equals some formula in terms of x's whose graph is the symmetrical u-shaped graph not based there but instead based there can you figure one out in fact i will talk about this after we have a little pause right now so if you want to try it pause the video and then i'm going to give away my thinking on this after this Okay, so let me give away the answer to this puzzle, which is kind of a shame because, you know, I'm a time constraint in this video, but it should take you, I don't know, minutes, maybe hours, or like me, days to figure out what to do. How to move this graph, which is centered here at the origin, and somehow get it up to be balancing on the top of my head. That's actually a really deep thing to think about, and it takes a while to realize what you can do. So I'm sorry I'm going to ruin that beautiful flash of insight for you by giving you away my thinking right now, but here it is, here it is. I can actually see I need two motions. Somehow I've got this graph, y equals x squared, which is basically centered at the origin at the point zero, zero. In fact, people call the place where it dips down to the lowest point a special name. They call it the vertex of the graph because it seems significant, so people always give names to significant things. But they call it the vertex. I want to somehow now do two motions. To get this graph on the top of my head, I can go horizontally and get the vertex to be sitting there instead. So I get a new formula something like that gives me a graph like that and then I can shift this vertically up six units to give me a graph like that. So there's actually two things I need to attend to. How to move the first, first move the graph over here to get a new formula y equals something or other and then adjust that formula by getting a new formula y equals something or other rather up here that shifts everything up by six. All right so let's focus on the first one. How would I get this graph to move over here? And here's the flash of insight that came to me after a long while. You know, mathematics takes a long while. That's just how it is. Thinking deeply requires deep, creative, innovative thinking, and you've just got to let your brain take the time it needs to do something deep and creative and innovative. Just how it is. Anyhow, but I have to give it away because time. <sighs> Sad. All right. I can't help but notice that this graph here has all this interesting action happening at x equals zero. And I want a graph over here that instead has all the interesting action happening at x equals 4. That means I kind of want 4 on this graph to behave like 0 on this graph. I want the number 4 to behave like 0. That is, for this formula, I know how 0 is behaving, I want 4 to behave like 0 in a formula like that one. How am I going to make that happen? That's kind of a vague thing I said. But think about it. I'm going to copy this formula, but in a way that makes 4 behave like the number 0. Here goes, you ready? y equals x minus 4 squared. I have a feeling that's this formula, but now with 4 behaving like 0. Do you see it? In fact, if I put in x equals 4 here, what do I get? I'll get 4 minus 4, I get 0 squared. 0 squared. 4 is behaving like the number 0 in this formula. For that, for that formula. Whoa! And you can check, actually, this is going to be a correct plot. Because if I go 1 over, say, to 5, then this will be like 5 minus 4, 1 squared. Just like going 1 over, 1 squared, height of 1, height of 1. Or if we go 1 to the left to 3, when x is 3, I get 3 minus 4, negative 1 squared, which is 1. Height of 1, just like I was, negative 1 over here, height of 1. 
So either side of 4, it's still the height of 1. Either side of 0, it's a height of 1. Either side of 0 by 2 and negative 2, I'm sure is the same as 6 and, and 2. 2 over, 2 over, because if I put 6 in, 6 minus 4 is 2 squared. Yep, 2 squared. Or negative, uh, 2, 2 minus 4 is negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared. Yes, this is exactly the same graph, except now 4 is behaving like 0, and the rest of the graph is the same. So basically, yes, the whole graph is now centered about x equals 4. So my point is, to shift a graph horizontally, just ask, which number do you want to behave like 0? And then just make it happen. And you will have a formula for a graph with that value behaving like 0 for that graph. Wonderful. Next challenge. Now I've moved my graph over, how do I move the height up? How do I make every data value go up by a value of 6? For example, I need this point here to go up by 6. I need this point here to go up by 6. I need this point here to go up by 6. I need this point here to go up by 6. Everything needs to go up by 6. I need to add 6 to all my possible outputs. Ah, that's it, that's it. This is what I just said. Here are all the things that come out of my graph, out of my formula, but I need to add 6 to all these possible outputs. So let me add 6 to all of these. Let's try y equals x minus 4 squared plus 6 to everything. That will make everything 6 higher. Let's check. When x is 4, I get 0 squared, 0, but plus 6, 6 higher. When x is 5, I'll get 1 squared, 1, but 6 higher, 7. When x is 6, I'll get 2 squared, 4, plus 6 higher, so on. It really is making everything 6 higher. This graph is now sitting on my head. It's got the number 4 behaving like 0 for the x values, and everything's been shifted 6 units higher. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant indeed. We've done it. Except actually, I can make a whole host of formulas like this sit on my head, these symmetrical U-shaped graphs. There's one other aspect of these graphs I need to talk about next, and that's the steepness of the graphs. So let me uh, clean the board and talk about one more feature of these basic y equals x squared graphs coming right up.